Well, good evening, everyone. Great to see all of you tonight. My name is Cynthia Edwards, and welcome to the ninth Dex Unlimited Canada Marsh Masterclass. Tonight, we're focused on youth education and empowering the next generation of conservationists and decision makers. So I recognize many of the names uh, tonight. If this is your first Marsh Masterclass, then welcome. And for those of you who are returning, I see several of you, welcome back. Very pleased to have all of you with us tonight. We couldn't do the great conservation work that we do without you, our major donors and volunteers across uh, the Canada and the US, so welcome. Couple housekeeping items before we get started tonight. Uh, all of you are on mute. We have several breaks for questions throughout this evening as usual. So if you have a question, please do put it in the chat box. We'll be monitoring that. And you can uh, ask me to read it for you or you can ask me to prompt you to unmute and uh, read it, ask it directly. Also, some of you may have noticed we are recording this event so that others can uh, view it later and see it on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm obligated to let you know that it's viewed and recorded, so please be on your best behavior. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Cynthia Edwards. I'm the Chief of Major Gift Programs for Ducks Unlimited Canada and the Senior Development Manager uh, cross-border working with our partners across the U.S. and Mexico. So as we meet on Zoom today from all over North America, wanted to take a minute and acknowledge the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations peoples as the original caretakers of this land. And I encourage each of you to identify the traditional and unceded territories and where applicable treaties that you live with and work within. So I'm coming to you tonight from my home in Madison, Mississippi, traditional homeland of the Choctaw Nation. So we have a very exciting evening planned for you tonight. There's a lot going on within our education profile within Ducks Unlimited Canada, and tonight we wanted to highlight a few of those endeavors. We want to touch on the program overall, talk a little bit about the Ducks Unlimited Canada Interpretive Centres, the Wetland Centres of Excellence, and our newly formed Youth Advisory Council. So to cover all those topics, I'm joined by three of my colleagues this evening, all of whom have a role in educating Canada's youth about the many values our wetlands and associated habitats provide for waterfowl, other wildlife, and people. First of all, we have Marianne Bola. Marianne is our head of national education. She's been with us for just over three years. She is a wildlife biologist with an MBA and has a passion for educating the public on the wonders of wildlife and the human animal connections. And she'll be coming to us live from our studio at Okamak Marsh. We're also joined by Jody Hambrook and Natalie Bays this evening. Jody's the manager of outreach and development in Atlantic Canada and has been with us for the past 15 years. She has a Bachelor of Science with a double major in biology and environmental studies and a renewable resource management postgraduate degree. Natalie Bays is our manager of operations for the Harry J. Enns Wetland Discovery Center at Okamak Marsh. Originally from Quebec, she holds a, nat a master's in natural resource sciences and has been with us for 24 years. She's very passionate about wildlife and believes that connecting people with wetlands through experiential education is the key to the future of conservation. So welcome to all of our uh, speakers tonight. And with that, I will turn it over to Marianne to kick off our discussion. Thank you, Cynthia. And thank you to you at home who has taken some time out of your busy days to learn more about how your contribution helps support the UC's education program. And most importantly, how you are impacting the lives of many young people. I'm coming to you today from Treaty One territory, also known as the heartland of the Métis people, here at the learning studio of the Harry J. N. Wetland Discovery Center. I would like us to acknowledge and are thankful for the curiosity that this land brings to all of our visitors. Conservation starts with education. If you never get the chance to hear about or learn about or visit wetlands, how would you know that they matter? Perhaps you start to care because you see something that is absolutely gorgeous. For example, this 13 line ground squirrel 
eating on a Canada thistle flowers and seeds. I mean, it's just so cute. You can't forget it. Or perhaps you start to care because you hear sounds that you didn't know were possible in me. Or perhaps you start to care when you realize that we are all just the same, wanting to care for our loved ones. Youth that experience these moments, remember that wetlands are important and consider wetland conservation in their decision-making process, wherever life might take them. For the last 20 years, DUC has been educating and reaching youth across the country through our inspiring stories from the Wetland Heroes Program, through our youth leaders at the Wetland Centers of Excellence Program, and recently through our online remote program, and very, very, very recently, like Monday night, our new Youth Advisory Council program, and through the engaging programming and the unique outdoor experiences that our interpretive centers offer across the country. We have three interpretive centers, and tonight it is my pleasure to have Jody Hambrick from out east in Maritimes uh, share with us the exciting uh, programs that are going on over there, followed by Natalie Bays, the manager of the Wetland Discovery Center here in Manitoba. Great, thank you, Marianne. That virtual screen just never ceases to amaze me. So cool. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our two wetland interpretive centers here in Atlantic Canada. Um, and certainly the youth education programs that we were able to provide because of them. Um, the first one is the uh, Shubenacadie Wetland Center located in Nova Scotia um, within the Provincial Wildlife Park. And it's about 40 minutes outside the province's capital of Halifax. Uh, the center was built in 2006 in partnership with the provincial government, um, along with a key founder and prominent businessman, uh, the late Mr. Ben McRae. Uh, and of course, many other volunteers and supporters that made this happen. Um, we're very proud of this center um, here. Um, it lies within, as I mentioned, 40 hectares of the wetland park of the wildlife park. Uh, and the building itself is 5,000 square feet, uh, which includes 14 learning stations and two classroom facilities. Um, the over 100,000 visitors that come to the park each year uh, not only have access to the wetland center, uh, but this is surrounded by three restored wetland marshes um, that exist directly adjacent to the center and have accompanying trails over four kilometers uh, throughout uh, St. Andrew's Marsh. Um, as you can see from the photos here, the students are immersed in outdoor experience uh, that they don't always get every day, especially those uh, in urban environments, as we know. Um, we have used the term, the wonder of wetlands, often when we talk about uh, our experiences. And here we have the second site um, that I'm going to mention, uh, which was actually our first site that was built in 1996, um, is our Ducks Unlimited Conservation Center, uh, located in the city of Fredericton in the capital of New Brunswick. Um, this center was really the foundation of our education programs here in Atlantic uh, and was guided by our directors and volunteers' strong passion and dedication to youth education. Um, this included past uh, Duck president, Mr. Arthur Irving, uh, and his family. Um, they knew that if we teach kids about the value and importance of wetlands, um, they could be inspired and empowered to appreciate them uh, into the future and as one of the strongest ways to ensure that conservation and protection uh, stayed in place for these special habitat places. Um, and we've seen this with the provincial wetland conservation policy coming into place in 2002. Uh, and at that time, we were bringing over 80% of the grade four elementary students in New Brunswick to wetland education sites um, and through the means of hundreds of local supporters. Um, again, as in the Wetland uh, Center in Shubenacadie, uh, we have both indoor and outdoor stations that guide youth to understand potentially complex theories by making them fun and interactive. Um, I mean, look at those smiles on their faces. I mean, they're, they're having a good time there and still learning. <laughs> and ultimately, um, we seek to instill 
uh, an appreciation of wetland habitats and empower youth to play a role in their conservation. We do this through strong partnerships and other organizations and, and relationship building to deliver outreach across the province and our expand our reach and messaging. Um, we do this through formal education and getting into the classroom and or bringing them to these wetland sites. Um, this is achieved through meeting the required curriculum the teachers have um, to link their classroom plans to. We do this through two wetland centers, as I mentioned, and have opportunities for students to participate in research-based programs and them being a part of that experience. So they're leading that. And we do this through students and volunteers that guide the program and mentor other youth to be involved. Um, and this can only be done by the supporters that make this happen. And lastly, I wanted to introduce a very special initiative um, that we are honored to be a part of. Um, and for the last couple of years, uh, we've been working with various Indigenous partnerships uh, and their leaders to incorporate two wide seeing, an approach that weaves two perspectives together. Um, where I am today uh, and the land we deliver our education program on continues to be the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, Wulistikwe, and Passamaquoddy peoples, um, which falls under the Peace and Friendship Treaties here. Um, there is so much more that we don't know and have the opportunity to bring other ways of knowing into our land-based programs at our centers. Um, as co-partners with Wabanaki Tree Spirit, we have shared a wild rice harvest and for the last two uh, fall seasons have harvested rice along the wetlands within the Wollastic. Um, this is also known as the St. John River here in New Brunswick. We have partnered with the Confederacy of Mainland Mi'kmaq to plant wisku. Um, that's black ash uh, near wetlands at the center. Uh, the whiskey is actually a threatened species in the province, um, and not only uh, a species that grows near wetlands, but was important tree species for traditional basket weaving. And the Confederacy also led wetlands of Mi'kmaq, teachings to youth, uh, and Mi'kmaq being Mi'kmaq territory and the land that includes what is now Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and parts of Maine. And Thank you for listening and sharing this time with me. We have been offering education programs since 1996 in the province of New Brunswick, and we are now moving towards incorporating two-eyed seeing, which includes both a scientific approach as well as traditional Indigenous knowledge. This relationship is, it's been, um, it's been a few years in the making. And so I called him or I sent him an email and said, hey, you know, we should partner and we should do this because I know that we haven't done any rice harvesting in over a hundred years. Thank you, Jody. So uh, I will share a little bit about the Wetland Discovery Centre. So welcome to this Wetland Discovery Centre at Oak Hammock Marsh. We are located just north of Winnipeg and within the same building as the national headquarters for Ducks Unlimited Canada. So what you see here is an aerial view of our green roof and on the right hand side, the interpretive centre on the left hand side, the national headquarters offices. So I will just give you a quick overview of the, of the center for those that might not be familiar with us. We opened in 1993, so it's been, a, it's been a, a wild and exciting ride for us. We, in a typical year, greet about 100,000 visitors um, from all over the globe, which is exciting. We are located on a 36 square kilometer wildlife management area. So another just amazing part, uh, reason for this site is about 50% of that wildlife management area is a restored wetland. We have won local, national, and international awards, and that's for our staff, for our programming, as well as the building itself and the sustainable features that it has. We offer a variety of programming at the center for all ages and abilities, and uh, anything in terms of public programs from workshops to birthday parties to team building for, for businesses. So a little bit of everything, but as Jody mentioned, the focus is on the interactivity. We really want the, our guests that come out to have um, an amazing time to connect with wetland 
and just to take that home and remember that when they get home. Of course, the key component of what we do is formal education programs delivered to youth. And these are students anywhere from our teeny tiny preschool um, to university, both on site and off. We also um, make curriculum links, deliver curriculum linked programming. It's something that the teachers really appreciate. So the theme remains wetlands, but it's linked to what the students are learning in class at that time. So it really connects the two well. We deliver programming to over 30,000 students per year, and that is on site and off. We did have an extensive traveling education program across three provinces, but the pandemic forced us to pivot and, and explore a different way of delivery into the classroom. And that's when the addition of the virtual programs began in 2021. So of course we prefer uh, the connection on the wetland when possible, but when not possible, um, there are really amazing ways to connect with students in other ways. So the virtual programming has been extremely well received and we've just really begun. So as you can see from the testimonial below that begins with wow, um, it, it's been a, a really good learning experience for us and for the students. So we are hoping uh, to expand both geographically because now we can read a broader, we can reach a broader audience that we were ever able to travel to before but as well from a technology perspective, because we really want to create an immersive experience for the students, even though they're not with us, we want them to feel like they are with us in the room. And I think when you saw Marianne at the beginning of the presentation, really got that impression with the images in the background and the films. We also have technology like our micro video where you can see our little dragonfly nymph on the image where we can really zoom in to some live critters and, uh, and, and the feedback has been extraordinary. The questions have really come in from the students. So it's been, it's been a, a good start for us and re we really hope to, uh, to grow that program. So the virtual teaching has been the first component of the re-envisioning process for the center. So after 20 years in operation, it's time to revisit our programming. Um, but also the center itself, the Wetland Discovery Center, which after 28 years, you know, we've, we've done some improvements, but we could really use uh, a new vision moving forward. So we are hoping and we have started the process and it's an exciting journey. Uh, we've been working with consultants and the Im images that you see on the right are some renderings of potential new exhibits, new engaging in exhibits how we can connect people from all over with our, with our center. So it would be the physical visit, but also virtually as well. So we are really looking forward to the results and where we go next. We have met uh, with all the programming we offer, whether it be on-site, off-site, to walk in public, to small children, to seniors. Um, we've really seen some, some amazing reactions from people that really didn't came in interested, but really didn't know much about wetlands or their importance or what they do for all of us. We have also met many past students who apply for positions or are working in other conservation related fields, following their experience, whether it be at Okamak or Shubenacadie or other wetland sites across the country. And you'll find out more about that a little bit later in this presentation. But those stories tell us we are affecting behaviors and, uh, and we hope to continue in the future because when you see those eyes light up, as Jody mentioned, um, it doesn't matter how long we've worked there. It really, we get as excited as the kids do. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Natalie. I think we'll take a, a few minutes for, for questions. If you do have questions, please put them in the chat. But I did want to start with one thing that struck me. So both Natalie and Jody, you mentioned about 100,000 visitors a year in a quote unquote regular year at uh, Shubenacadie and at the Harry JN's Wetland Discovery Center. How has the pandemic affected uh, your wetland centers? Oh, well, I can start uh, from our perspective, of course, uh, the pandemic did force us to close for a significant period of time. 
um, I guess, it, and, and it, it certainly made us rethink the way we deliver programming and come up with creative ways to connect with people, even though we couldn't bring them in. So one of the things we did is uh, we launched a self-guided canoe rental program where people could rent a canoe and then follow a series of, of signs that are actually in the water to learn more about wetlands and what they do for us and who lives there. And that has been really popular. So in that sense, it was interesting to see the shift. There were actually more people on site. So people were craving to get outdoors. So we just moved ourselves and some of our programming outdoors. So it was definitely a significant impact, of course, for us, for revenue, um, for staffing um, as well. Right. But, you know, I, I like that little positive edge of we, we were forced to get really creative. Right. Great. Excellent. Jody, anything to add from, from your perspective in the Maritimes? Um, just that uh, the same with us um, being at the Shubenacadie Wildlife Park and having our center there. Um, certainly there's a, a beautiful outdoor space. The animals um, were still uh, there and whatnot. So we continue to uh, see folks more than ever, I think, uh, wanting and craving that and uh, needing that outdoor space um, and being able to, to continue to offer that to them. Um, in terms of our Fredericton one, uh, our center there, um, we quickly, um, you know, uh, worked together, um, us, Okamic, um, you know, Mary Ann to, uh, to put up a, a virtual studio. Um, and we have right. programs, you know, happening um, in the spring uh, and within a, a few weeks, um, you know, switch from outdoors. Of course, that's our first uh, priority is to get them outdoors, um, but still providing them that experience um, through virtual uh, in classroom or even at home. They could have had, um, you know, uh, a connection at home and we could have still been able to reach them uh, and educate them about wetland. So pretty cool awesome. stuff. Well, that's, I think Natalie hit the nail on the head. We were all forced to be a little more creative than we thought. So, so great. I think we'll, uh, I don't see any questions in the chat. We'll have another spot here at the end of the presentation, but maybe we'll move on to, to Marianne to talk a little bit more about the Wetland Centers of Excellence. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, so as we've been discussing, DUC education is all about empowering youth. And maybe you're asking, but why? <laughs> well, our youth are facing some unprecedented challenges. Right now, they're facing the climate crisis and the biodiversity loss. And it can be very overwhelming. The good news is that we know wetlands can help in both of those cases. So we know that, for example, wetlands sequester carbon, and they are habitat for many different species of animals and plants. So, Reaching out to youth and letting them know about the incredible powers of wetlands and having them take wetland conservation action right away alleviates their stress, their anxieties about the future because they are now taking, taking control through their actions. And that is exactly what our high school program, the Wetland Centers of Excellence Centers offers. Concrete actions, local actions that make a national difference. The Wetland Centers of Excellence program is a network of high schools and community partners that engage students in wetland conservation through science projects, students to student mentored field trips, and community outreach. Throughout this one year learn learning journey, the high school students go out multiple times at the wetland and each experiences builds on the other. It's a mix of hands-on, but also research-driven projects. At the end of the year, they are now officially wetland experts, trust me, <laughs> and they have the chance to take on and share their knowledge with the elementary students in their communities by taking them out on wetland field trips. We know this program is life-changing. We have heard from many teachers that, first of all, this program builds self-confidence, helps kids finish high school, and also offers directions into environmental careers. So next, we'll hear directly from these leaders and from some students that have partaken in the program. When you bring students 
from your classroom, which is your four walls, concrete, and you bring them to the outside, you see a totally different being. They are excited, they're engaged, they have a sense of wonderment. Even grade 12s are excited about finding an, uh, a slug or they're finding a snail. You don't get that kind of excitement and engagement in a regular classroom. When the grade fours would find out that high school kids were with them, I saw that firsthand that they would be locked in listening. The grade fours were not listening to me anywhere close to when my, when my students said something, they'd be like all ears. So it really did uh, have an impact, I think. So that was an aha. My advice would be if you're a little bit nervous to do something, to just sign up and then go to the orientation day and then try one field trip before you can decide if you don't like it. Most people, once they do the training day, realize how fun it is and then they'll continue and they'll want to do as many field trips as they can. <laughs> I was just saying that Autumn had some really good advice for us. If you're feeling nervous about something, a bit scared, just try it. And this is also um, a good tie to another component of our program is that it offers real life meaning um, opportunities for our students. For example, in 2021, we hosted our first ever case study competition, which was based on our own DUC conservation challenges. So students from across the country were tasked at researching two topics, either the, pro the biodiversity loss in the prairie pothole region, or find adaptations to the sea level rise in the Maritimes. Students had two weeks to research and find a solution and then present their recommendations to a panel of judges, which included the UC scientist staff. And I'd like you to meet the winners. We had uh, Neha, Chloe, and Mabel were the winners of the 2021 case study competition. One thing that they had in their solution was to add muzzles in the salt marsh to increase the rate of restoration. It was very novel. Even our own staff learned something new that day. But what is really meaningful is that these students spent at least 30 hours researching what on earth is a dike or uh, where on earth is the prairie pothole region. <laughs> these students are from Toronto. They maybe have never been to a salt marsh before, but trust me, they know everything about it and they will remember that wherever they go in life. Another great aspect about the WCE program is that it builds self-confidence. I'd like you to meet Nathan. Nathan was a high school student in Mount Forest, Ontario. His teacher, Matt, shared with us that at first he started a program and yeah, he was a little shy. Um, but through a lot of effort, he practiced his delivery and he grew into this confident leader. Matt says it was really good to see him come out of his shell thanks to the program. And that's not all. Because Matt took the WC program, he discovered all the opportunities of careers in conservation. He is now in his third year of university in environmental science at the University of Guelph. And he's doing a co-op program, so he is learning about forest management and wildlife restoration. He says that he feels very fortunate for being able to do what he loves every day. The WC program definitely brings opportunities and people together. This is Joyce. She is from Fort Richmond Collegiate here in Winnipeg. When she started high school, she was feeling a bit like the odd kid out, the only environmental kid. She was in a high school that is really well known for their computer and engineering programs. But surely enough, she found out about the WCE program where she got the chance to meet other like-minded teenagers that cared for the environment. She knew she would like the program, but she didn't realize how much she would love the program. Joyce is the only student in her cohort who volunteered three years in a row with the WC program. Her favorite part was the mentorship aspect of it. She says that kids are hilarious. They ask the funniest questions, which I totally agree. And that's not it. She volunteered for years. And in her final year, she led an independent research project looking at the effects of having cattails and their effect on phosphorus level in ditches. This research project won her a spot 
at the Super Science Fair in Japan, an international science fair in Japan. Now Joyce has graduated from Fort Richmond this spring and is in her first year at the University of Manitoba in environmental sciences. So what comes next for the Wetland Center of Excellence program? Well, we are expanding west. So we are looking at the cities of Regina, Calgary, Edmonton, and we can't wait to give this opportunity to more Canadians across the country. And again, it's thanks to your support, your contributions that we are able to grow this program. That's awesome, Marianne, thank you. I think we had a, a couple more spots for question before we get on to the Youth Advisory Council members. So if there's any questions, please do put them in the, in the chat. Um, Marianne, I did have a question for the WCE folks, like how, can you explain a bit more how the members, the students are recruited, I guess? Yes, so it depends on the structure of the WCE in each school. So in some schools, it is automatically integrated in a science class. And so, for example, Carolyn Barnhart that you saw in the video, um, she has all her students doing research projects um, throughout the year. So they go to the wetlands to do the learning about wetlands, the field trips, but throughout the year, each student in that program also has an individual research project. So then they go back and then also use the wetland for their individual projects and credits. Other centers work more on a volunteer basis, like Joyce. Um, so in those instances, it's an after school club, for example, mm -hmm. and it's students that sign up. So there's two different formats. Well, I can uh, certainly attest to the the excitement I see in the students. If you've been at Atlantic Experience, and I had to ask Jody what the what the name of it again, but the Tantramar uh, Wetland Center of Excellence in New Brunswick, we take uh, donors there every time. Every time we're fortunate enough to have an Atlantic Experience, and it's typically uh, shines through as the highlight of uh, of that where our donors and, and folks who've invested in that program and other programs in Atlantic Canada get to get to actually see that in firsthand. And it really is exciting. And the students are pretty amazing and we get to uh, send folks out to, to uh, in canoes and it's, uh, well, you never know what's gonna happen in a canoe. <laughs> I guess. So yes, I'm very excited to share with everyone tonight uh, that we just launched our first Youth Advisory Council. So DUC has brought together 10 members um, together to form our first council. These members will get unprecedented opportunities to share their perspective on conservation, what role they want to play, and what can DUC do to move their vision forward. It's a two-year term, and the first year is all about giving wetland science learning opportunities for the members, as well as giving them also uh, professional training, getting them set up in their, uh, getting them set up to start their careers. And the second year, which we're very excited about, is that we will hear recommendations from the members about what can we do to engage youth and what can we do to make sure that our conservation mission um, speaks to youth in moving forward. So we have a special treat for the audience tonight. Um, two of our Youth Council members have accepted to take some time out of their busy exam crunch time period uh, to speak with you tonight. So first of all, thank you very much, Murdoch and Beth, for taking some time tonight. So Murdoch and Beth, if you can uh, unmute yourselves and turn your cameras on. Wonderful. OK, I see Murdoch. Great. Uh, and I see Beth, hello. <laughs> Great to have you here tonight. Um, so I'll start with you, Beth. A couple questions if you want to share with the audience. If you can let us know uh, where you're from, what are you studying, and what perspective are you hoping to bring to the council? OK, sure. Um, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, I am Beth Lundgren. I am from Glenora, Manitoba but I am currently studying um, environmental sustainability slash 
natural resource management in um, Memorial University of Newfoundland. Um, I'm very excited to bring the perspective of the prairies to the group um, since I've been raised on a farm. Um, I'm also an avid hunting and fishing enthusiast, so I understand the, um, the needs for harvesting as well as the needs for conservation. So I'm excited to incorporate that into the group as well as um, collaborating with all the other group members from across Canada. Thank you, Beth. And Murdoch, same to you. Sure, yeah. Um, currently, I'm a master's student at the University of Waterloo, but I'm based in my hometown of Calgary. Given the pandemic, everything can be online. And I'm essentially researching new methods to reclaim well pads in peatlands in northern Alberta back into peatland ecosystems. Um, I'm really excited to bring the perspective also from the prairies, but from the urban prairies, I would say. I spent most of my life growing up in the city, and so I'm excited to provide a perspective of someone who has spent a lot of time in the cities as sort of trying to escape the city and getting out onto the landscape, but as opposed to being out on the landscape all the time. Um, I'm also really excited to bring my perspective as a young wetland researcher to the council, um, and I hope that it will help you see to better, better understand how uh, young people and sort of the wider research communities see some of the great research work that UC is doing. That's great. Thank you. So I, I liked your um, phrase there, the, the urban prairies. <laughs> That's good. Um, so let's see from the audience, do we have any questions uh, for, our, for our members or about the Youth Advisory Council? So Marianne, I uh, just to get a little bit more and in, dig into the Youth Advisory Council a little bit more. Um, can you explain again kind of the number of members and sort of the geographic distribution of them? I, I understand that was one of the your objectives was to have a pretty good geographic distribution. So yes, no, that you're right, Cynthia. So the council has 10 members and we wanted to make sure we had someone um, from all the provinces. Um, so we managed, <laughs> we have someone from BC, we have two folks from Alberta, um, we have one or two from Saskatchewan as well, and then Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and one person from uh, the Maritimes. And we also have uh, French speakers, uh, like you've heard, we have hunters, non-hunters, um, master's students, uh, bachelor student, students. Um, we also have, uh, how do you say, um, trade students. Um, so we have a, a big variety of folks on the council. So um, Marianne, I know you're just getting started in the Youth Advisory Council, but uh, maybe explain a little bit more about the priorities of what you want the, the students to do. And I'm Beth and Murdoch, I'm looking very much looking forward to mm -hmm. getting to know you better and welcome. Yeah, so the priorities, well, our first year priorities is really making sure that Beth and Murdoch and the teammates uh, have opportunities to grow their understanding of wetland conservation, uh, the science, the conservation methods and also the opportunity to understand how uh, DUC works. Um, so get the chance to learn more about how we use technology in our conservation work, for example. So get a chance to speak with our uh, you know, IT staff, GIS specialists, um, same things, get the chance to learn more about our education program. Uh, mm -hmm. So they can uh, get, share with us some ideas in the future of engagement programs for youth. And throughout that one year, uh, Murdoch and Beth, in a year from now, can be expert and can tell you everything about the UC and how we operate. <laughs> That's the expectation. Good. I look forward uh, to that. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> um, what I'm really excited for this year is uh, having the opportunity to, to get all the council members together at Dex University um, so they can have that field training as well. Um, and also have the chance to meet other of our scientists and our staff. But after this one year of crunching and learning everything about wetlands and everything about the UC, we're really looking forward, and I certainly am, 
to hearing about their recommendations. So one year from now, after they've gotten to know us, I'm sure they will have a long list of like, ooh, maybe you guys can do this or you guys can do that. Uh, so looking forward to that list. And from there, that list will be shared with uh, the DUC executives. And hopefully some, you know, not expecting the 100 point list will be uh, implemented, but the key ones, um, some of them will be implemented. And then that will be the second year where they will work to start implementing those recommendations, which is really empowering and awesome. Well, thank you all very much. Um, this has been a great session. And so, like I said at the outset, there's been so many things going on with our education program, and it really is uh, one of the shining examples of how we pivoted during the pandemic of the last 18 months to, to make sure that we could still stay connected to those students. So I really do thank you, Marianne, Jody, and, and Natalie, all of you for for doing such an awesome job during this pandemic. And, and thank you very much for taking the time out of your schedules today and for engaging uh, with all of us tonight. And to you, Beth and Murdoch, really uh, welcome to the DU Canada family and congratulations on your appointments to the Youth Advisory Council. I, I really do look forward to seeing what you accomplish and look forward to meeting you. And I hope you really like Dex University. It's still one of the highlights of my career at Dex Unlimited Canada. So. So with that, I will sign off today. Thank you for sharing a part of your busy day with us. I know it gets very busy this time of year with the holiday season. And thank you for all that you continue to do for wetland conservation and have a very happy holiday season. And again, have a good evening. <laughs>